Friends, welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple. This is a module wise EC network analysis paper solution series. In this tutorial, we are going to solve PTU CVCS scheme network analysis questions of module 4 of June July 2017 paper of syllabus 15 EC 34. Friends, I prefer to emphasize on concepts, strategy and thinking process rather than the detailed mathematical steps. I am sure you are well equipped with the required mathematical skills. Hope you will enjoy the travel. Let's go ahead. Friends, first let us solve the question on resonance circuit. In this question, we are required to derive equations for omega 1 and omega 2 for a series resonance circuit. Also, we have to derive expression for the bandwidth. Let us start by drawing a series RLC circuit connected across a variable frequency source of phi volts as shown in figure. We know omega naught is the resonance frequency in radians per second. Omega 1 is the lower half power frequency, omega 2 is the upper half power frequency and bandwidth Bw is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 radians per second. Observe the circuit shown in figure. Impedance Z is equal to R plus J into bracket XL minus XC. Here we assume that XL is greater than XC. But at resonance, we know that XL is equal to XC. Therefore, at resonance, impedance Z is equal to R as XL minus XC is equal to 0. Friends, by varying the frequency, the variation of current in the circuit observed is shown in figure. At resonance frequency F0, XL is equal to XC and current is maximum and is denoted as I0 and I0 is equal to V divided by R. But at off resonance frequencies, it is found that the current decreases on both sides. When frequency F is greater than F0, XL is greater than XC and when F is less than F0, XC is greater than XL. Note that if we find Power at resonance P0 is equal to I0 squared into R watts, but at half power frequencies I is equal to I0 by root 2. So that power P is equal to I0 divided by root 2 whole square into R, which will give us half of P0. That is the reason why F1 and F2 are called as half power frequencies. Now, Consider an event at frequency omega 2 radians per second. Let Z2 is equal to R plus J into bracket XL minus XC since in this frequency XL will be greater than XC. Then I is equal to V divided by Z2 or this is equal to V divided by R plus J into bracket XL minus XC. Then mod of i is equal to v divided by square root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square. Also, current at half hour frequencies is i is equal to i naught per root 2 or this can be written as v divided by root 2 r as i naught is equal to v by r. So, we get v divided by root 2 r is equal to V divided by square root of R square plus XL minus XC whole square. Hence, root to R is equal to square root of R square plus XL minus XC whole square. Let it be equation 1. Friends, observe that for this equation to be true, XL minus XC should be equal to R. Let it be equation 2. But recall that we are considering the event at f greater than f0. So, let frequency be omega 2, the upper half power frequency. Then, we have xl is equal to omega 2l, 
and x is equal to 1 upon omega 2 c. Using these values, equation 2 can be written as omega 2 l minus 1 upon omega 2 c is equal to r. Let it be equation 3. By rearranging it, we get omega 2 square l c minus omega 2 r c minus 1 is equal to 0. Let it be equation 4. You see that equation 4 is a quadratic equation of type ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 whose roots x1 comma x2 will be equal to minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4 ac divided by 2a. This you know. So, using this omega 2 is equal to rc plus square root of rc square minus 4 into bracket L into C into bracket minus 1 divided by 2 times LC. Note, only positive sign is taken so that omega 2 always will be positive. By solving it, we get omega 2 is equal to R divided by 2L plus square root of R divided by 2L whole square plus 1 divided by LC that is equation 5. But at lower half power frequency omega 1, xc is greater than xl. Therefore, equation 2 can be written as xc minus xl is equal to r. Let it be equation 2.1. Friends, equation 2.1 is reproduced here for convenience. Representing xc and xl in terms of omega 1, we have 1 upon omega 1 c minus omega 1 l is equal to r. Let it be equation 3.1. By rearranging it, we get omega 1 squared l c plus omega 1 r c minus 1 is equal to 0. Let it be equation 4.1. By solving it for the roots, we get omega 1 is equal to minus r c plus square root of rc square minus 4 times lc into bracket minus 1 divided by 2 times lc which will give us minus r by 2l plus square root of r by 2l square plus 1 by lc. Next, we know that bandwidth is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1. By substituting for omega 2 and omega 1 and solving it, we get bandwidth is equal to r by l or by multiplying and dividing by omega naught, we get bandwidth is equal to omega naught by q because q is equal to omega naught l by r. Friend, now let us solve a very simple problem on resonance circuit. We are required to find the value of L when resonance frequency is 500 radians per second. First, let me discuss the strategy of solving the question. Note that in the problem given, the voltage applied is not given. Don't be panic, friends. It is not required to solve this problem. The strategy will be find the total impedance or admittance of the circuit and equate the imaginary part to zero. That's all. So, let Z1 is equal to 2 plus J XL. Note that XL is inductive reactance in ohms. So, Y1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 plus J XL. By rationalizing it, we get Y1 is equal to 2 minus J XL divided by 4 plus XL square. Similarly, let Z2 is equal to 5 minus J10 or y2 is equal to 1 divided by 5 minus j10. By rationalizing it, we get y2 is equal to 5 plus j10 divided by 25 plus 100. Now, total admittance y is equal to y1 plus y2. By substituting for y1 and y2 and separating the real and imaginary parts, we get y is equal to 2 divided by 4 plus xl square plus 5 divided by 125 plus j into bracket 10 divided by 125 minus xl divided by 4 plus xl square. 
by equating the imaginary part of y to 0, we get 10 divided by 125 is equal to xl divided by 4 plus xl square. By solving it, we get a quadratic equation in xl that is 10 xl square minus 125 xl plus 40 is equal to 0. By finding xl, we get xl is equal to 125 plus or minus square root of 125 square minus 4 into 10 into 40 divided by 2 into 10, which gives us two values of xl, that is xl is equal to 12.17 ohm and xl is equal to 0 0.328 ohm. But L is equal to XL divided by omega naught. Therefore, one value of L is equal to 12.17 divided by 500, which will give us 24.34 millihenries. And another value of L is equal to 0 0.328 divided by 500, which will give us 0 0.65 millihenries. Hope you have understood it. Friends, we shall solve at another question on resonance circuit. This time it is on parallel resonance circuit. In this question, we are required to derive expressions for resonance frequency and dynamic impedance of a parallel resonance circuit. But let me discuss the strategy and thinking process before we start answering the question. We know that a parallel resonance circuit is one in which Coil and the capacitance are connected in parallel across an AC source of varying frequency supply. But friends, using the same definition, we can have two circuits. One is a parallel circuit of R and L in series in one branch and capacitance C in the other branch as shown. And another circuit is a parallel circuit of one branch RL and L in series and in the other branch RC and C in series and both are in parallel as shown. Out of the two circuits, we can choose any one. So, I prefer to choose figure 1. The strategy of solving will be find the total admittance of the circuit and equate the imaginary part to 0 to find the expression for omega naught. To find the expression for the dynamic impedance Z0, choose the real part of the total admittance at resonance and find Z0. Hope it is clear to you. So, let Z1 is equal to R plus JXL and Y1 is equal to 1 upon R plus JXL. By rationalizing it, we get y1 is equal to r minus jxl divided by r square plus xl square. Similarly, let z2 is equal to minus jxc and y2 is equal to 1 divided by minus jxc, which will give us y2 is equal to j divided by xc. Hence, total admittance y is equal to y1 plus y2. By substituting, we get y is equal to r minus jxl divided by r square plus xl square plus j divided by xc. By separating the real and imaginary parts, we get y is equal to r divided by r square plus xl square plus j into bracket 1 divided by xc minus xl divided by r square plus xl square. We know that at resonance, the imaginary part of the total admittance will be 0. So, by equating it to 0, we get 1 divided by xc is equal to xl divided by r square plus xl square. But, at resonance, xc is equal to 1 divided by omega naught c and xl is equal to omega naught l. So, by substituting in terms of omega naught, we get omega naught c is equal to omega naught l divided by r square plus omega naught square l square. By solving it, we get r square plus omega naught square l square is equal to l divided by c. Let it be equation 1. 
by solving equation 1 for omega naught, we get to omega naught is equal to square root of 1 divided by LC minus R square divided by L square and F naught is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of 1 by LC minus R square divided by L square. To find the dynamic impedance, choosing the real part of the total admittance, we get y naught is equal to r divided by r square plus omega naught square l square and z naught is equal to r square plus omega naught square l square divided by r. By using equation 1 and substituting r square plus omega naught square l square is equal to l by c, we get z naught is equal to l divided by r c. Hope it is clear to you. Friends, finally, let us solve one very easy and straightforward problem on series resonance circuit. There is no much thinking process involved in this problem. We need to only use the relevant formulae based on the given data and find the parameters asked for. First, let us draw the circuit incorporating the appropriate values given. Observe the figure shown. To find the impedance at resonance, we know that Z is equal to R plus or minus J into bracket XL minus XE. At resonance, the imaginary part of the impedance will be 0. So, Z naught is equal to R and that is equal to 20 ohm. It is so simple. Next, to find the resonance frequency F naught, we know that at resonance XL is equal to XE or omega naught L is equal to 1 upon omega naught C. By solving it, we get omega naught is equal to 1 divided by root LC or F naught is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root LC. By substituting the values of L equal to 80 into 10 to the power of minus 3 and C is equal to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 12, we get F naught is equal to 56.269 kilohertz. Next, to find Q, we know that Q is equal to omega naught L divided by R or 2 pi F naught L by R. By substituting the values, we get Q is equal to 1414. Next, to find the circuit current, we know that at resonance, I naught is equal to V by R. By substituting the values, we get I naught is equal to 50 divided by 20, which will give us 2.5 ampere. Friends, after going through this tutorial, hope you are convinced that identifying the appropriate formulae based on the given data is the important skill required in solving the problems on resonance circuits. Of course, thinking process before you start solving the question will help you to make answering in a logical way. Hope this tutorial has kindled some of your thoughts. If so, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.